Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, today we're going to continue on new chapter, which is uh, estimation. Right. So, in estimation, we will learn uh, some important. Uh, before we go in deep with the estimation, we will learn some important things uh, such as the term of parametric uh, parameter and statistics and uh, another one is uh, normal distribution. We just want to go through uh, in brief normal distribution just to do a, our revision lah. because we already learned uh, normal distribution in chapter STA 416 remember. Right. So, uh, as introduction, sampling. Let's look at a sampling. Right. Uh, in estimation, usually we are estimate from sample. Right. So to infer to the population. Uh, so this is a, a second type of a statistic, which is inferential statistics. Remember, in chapter number one, as it already teach you, uh, there are two type of statistics. Uh, first is a uh, descriptive statistics, another one is uh, inferential statistics. So, in inferential statistics, we want to infer our conclusion from sample to the population. Right. So, now, why we, uh, we do sampling? Uh, because uh, we have a very large population and we don't have uh, enough uh, uh, what we call a cost a labor to collect all the uh, the the member in the population so that's why we do sample right so so this this is why we 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 do a sample right so now let me call uh, some a term from chapter 1 which is parameter a right, parameter is a numerical summary from population, right? So we are taking a mean from the population. We are taking, we are calculating a variance from population. Statistic without S is a numerical summary compute from sample. So then, uh, from the whole population, we select a sample, a group of sample, and then we measure it means variance so this is what we call as statistics and the symbol used for sample and population or parameter are also different for example if you are calculate you uh, for sample size the symbol is small letter n for sample capital letter n for population mean uh, for sample is x bar which is statistics for parameter is mu, right? So you can you can see the difference between uh, parameter and statistics. So this is what we call parameter. Too thick, huh? Wait, uh, I change the thickness of of the pen. Right. So this is a uh, parameter. So oh, sorry, this is. Uh, Inilah symbol ni. Right? This is this symbol is a call as parameter, and all this symbol is called as statistic. Right without s. So now, um, kita tengok ke bawah ni ditulis apa? Right. So, if mean income in Malaysia is 40,000 per annum, right, this is referred as a population. So, the mean income in Malaysia, 40,000, we call as population parameter. And mean income in Ipoh, right, that means that part of Malaysian, Malaysia is Ipoh, right, 38,000. So, this is referred as statistic, lah, we all know, okay? So, the symbol we use for Epo is X bar. The symbol we use for the whole Malaysia mean of uh, income is mu. Right? So we use sample data to estimate population. So we can say that X bar is a point estimate of uh, mu. Lah. 
So point estimate means that uh, the value inside the uh, the symbol. Uh, so this is what we call as wait, uh, this is what we call as I put that in here. So we don't put uh, this is this value thirty eight thousand. We call as point estimate. Right. So this is what we call as uh, point estimator. Right? Boleh, eh? <coughs> so uh, the value of population parameter always constant. Uh, if you are looking into a single value lah. If you are looking into range Dia tak constant selalu lah Dia akan berubah lah uh, Dia ikut range dia kan So for example There only one value for the population mean right? However different sample size uh, Different sample of the same size Taken from population may have Different value of sample mean For example we, In one population right? So we can take uh, Many sample Let's say this is sample number one this is a sample number two. This is sample number three. Let's say in sample number two, we can, could have N1 equal to 100. Let's say kita ambil 100 orang daripada satu sample. N2 will be another 100. N3 will be another 100. So we can have many samples. Right? So if you take only one sample, so the question is uh, how reliable the value from this sample to represent the whole population right so we take one sample lah. so that's why we take more than one sample so we want to generalize our result of the sample to the whole population okay so kita tengok dekat sini page number 159 right when sample is drawn from population, there are many different sample could have been chosen. This means that the mean sample X bar will vary depending on sample peak. For example, kita tengok dekat ni, example bawah ni kan. So, they, they vary dari segi apa? Right? It will vary depending on which sample is peak. So, maybe it will uh, vary based on Sample distribution. Sample distribution lah. Sampling distribution. So, means that kita kena tengok uh, in sampling distribution, we will look into the the X bar. Right? The X bar for sample number 1 and S for sample number 1. Right? This might have, it might uh, contain a different value compared to X bar number 2 and S so, mungkin dia akan uh, tak sama value. Right? So, to generalize this sample, kita akan menggunakan uh, sampling distribution techniques. Right? So, nanti kita akan tunjuk lah. Right? So, now let's look at exam example. Example, suppose a class has a population of 30 students. And the lecturer want to know the average of uh, mark of the student. So let's say, let's say kita ambil uh, context yang kecil sikit lah. So they say, these 30 students is our whole population. So capital N is equal to 30. So let's say kita ambil 30 ni sebagai uh, the whole population lah kita kecilkan. Lah. So kita boleh nampak the application. Right, kalau besar sangat nanti I, uh, you tak boleh nampak dia punya application right right uh, let me choose right so to calculate the population mean right, population mean will be summation of x divided by capital N wait huh? ok so, uh, summation of x divided by capital N so means that the total of all marks right in a class right divided by total number of student in a population means in class right so is equal to 36.9 so 1000 1, 
108 divided by 30 is equal to 39.36.9. So this is our population mean, right? Our uh, standard deviation, population standard deviation. So since we can calculate the population standard deviation from the whole population, so look at the formula. It's a kind of different formula as we learned uh, last week, right? Last week, kita tengok sample variance, right? Sample variance, the formula will be uh, sm uh, square root of uh, summation of x square minus summation of x. And then you square it here, divide by n, everything divide by n minus 1. Uh, this, is a pop, uh, this is a formula for sample variance. For population variance, we no need 2 minus 1, right? So we are using capital letter of N, means uh, the total number of population. So the total number of population no need to be minus with 1 lah, because we are taking the whole population. So this minus 1 is, uh, we are considering some errors, right? We minus with 1. So the population variance will be what? 10.4. Uh, this is marks lah, huh? score 10.4 so let's say we uh, a lecturer draw a random sample of 5 means that from 30 students right so let's say they select 1 2 3 4 5 this is going to be sample 1 contoh lah walaupun tak sama kan I just want to show you right and then they ambil lagi sample of 5 lagi 1 this is S2 dia ambil lagi sikit lagi dia ambil 3 sampel lah let's say uh, 5 ke 3 kan this is 3 right, so dia ambil 3 ni so dia measure the first sampel let's say we have N equal to uh, 18 32 47 15 and 51 so we measure the uh, the mean sampel mean of the uh, sample number 1 so sem summation of x divided by n small letter n so we will get 32.6 so if you compare 32.6 and the population mean right 36.9 so can we tell how close the value is likely to to the whole population the Walaupun dia dalam range 30 plus, right? Tapi still, agak jauh sikit lah, right? Kalau kita tengok satu sample. If we take uh, another sample, so before we go uh, in that part, look at this one. 32.6 is our point estimate of point estimator mu. So, mu is our point estimator. So, remember ni eh. So, this is our point estimate. Right? So, remember this term. This is very important term. Right? It's because we are in estimation topic. Right? So, let's say we take, we draw another uh, sample. Right? Let's say, dikata dekat sini. Uh, repeatedly, you need to listen carefully this one. Eh? Repeatedly and draw another five Sample of 5, right? So, unlikely to get the same value, 32.6 uh, again, because the sample mean is vary from sample to sample. So, dia maksudnya, bila kita ambil lagi satu sample, dia tak mungkin dah, ataupun the chance of getting 32.6 from the first sample ni, is very low lah. Right? So, dia akan dapat different sample, uh, different value juga. Right? So, kita tengok uh, sample number 2. So, they have sample number 2. This is for sample 2. This is S2. So, we take for 5 observation. Uh, 42. Macam mana they select 5 observation out of 30? Either they are using sampling techniques, uh, probability sampling techniques or non-probability sampling techniques. Lah. Right? Kita dah belajar that one in chapter number 1. Right? Remember? So, uh, let's say they, they calculate uh, sample... A mean, you got 35.2, right? 
So let's say kita ambil lagi satu sampel, right? This is S3, right? Sample number 3 from the same population. So we got 33.4. So if you notice the value from each sample, sample 1, they dapat 32.6. Sample 2, they got 35.2. Right? And sample number 3, they got... This is the way we are talking about uh, mean of a sample. Huh? Mean of the sample. So this one, they got 33.4. So if you notice, the value of each sample, the mean of each sample is different. So how we can we generalize this value to the whole population? Right? Maksudnya dekat sini, uh, given this situation, we already know the mean of the population. Right? We already know the mean of population. Imagine, we don't know the mean of population. Right? Imagine we don't know the mean of population. Right? So we take a sample several sample and we want to generalize this value to the whole population right so this is our objective in this chapter we are not knowing the pop uh, population mean so we want to estimate the population mean right so this is the purpose of our example lah tapi kalau uh, our our chapter but in this example you nampak dia punya flow dia nampak daripada awal sampai habis lah uh, you know, you, you already know the population mean. So, to calculate the population mean, uh, right, sem, mean, uh, sem, uh, mean of the sample, right, so we are using the same method, which is x bar equal to summation of x bar divided by n. Right, this is a mean of sample mean. We, we call as mean of sample mean. So, I can also, let's say kita lebih letak uh, x bar bar lah. Uh, x bar bar. Right, x bar bar represent uh, the summation of x bar divided by number of x bar. Right, so tapi uh, this is wrong lah. Kita tak boleh kata x bar bar dekat sini. But, but we understand in our perspective, this is x bar bar. Uh, but actually, this is a mean of sample mean, x bar. Right? So, this one should be, we are taking all, the summation of all mean, right? 36.2 plus 35.6 plus 33.4 divided by 3. So, this one should be equal to 33.7. So, this is our uh, sample mean of the sample mean this is our generalized mean to the whole population right even though our kita nampak dekat sini the true mean the true mean is 36.9 right so we can test whether uh, kita nampak this is a 33.7 this is our estimated uh, mean for the whole population and the true mean is 36.9 so from here kita boleh uh, uh, kita boleh estimate right the range of the mean right of the in the population so itu yang kita nak uh, kita nak estimate so sekarang ni kita tahu this is the true mean right in in the real life, basically, we don't know the true mean. Do you understand? So, sekarang ni, I tunjuk dekat you, example yang kecil. So, we can calculate the true mean. The true mean is a power population mean lah. Right? So, in the real life, we don't know the true mean. Right? We cannot estimate, uh, we cannot determine the true mean. Now, let's say you have, you want to study on uh, knowledge, attitude and practice on dengue fever prevention at Perak Tengah District. So imagine in Perak Tengah District, there are so many uh, residents in Perak Tengah District. You cannot measure age of each resident in Perak Tengah. Okay? We, we cannot know the exact value or the true value. 
So we want to estimate. So estimate by using sample, right? So dekat sini dia kata uh, the histogram of mean sample mean is close resemble the true sampling distribution of the sample mean. So let's say kalau kita ambil beberapa sample right banyak sample so kita akan dapat the true uh, the true uh, the same uh, the normal distribution lah right so this is the illustration uh, to show uh, the mean a sample mean from the whole population lah sometimes kalau kita ambil x bar 1 so patutnya mungkin dekat sini x bar 2 mungkin dekat sini x bar 3 mungkin dekat sini so di dalam satu normal distribution curve lah right so this is the true mean right so we going to estimate uh, our chapter this chapter number 3 we want to estimate what is the range of the mean in the population so we nak tengok range dalam mean dalam population ni uh, banyak mana so adakah dia akan uh, more wide ataupun lebih tertumpu lah right so now, um, so this is the formula. Uh, this is a sample uh, mean, right? This is a this is a sample mean, right? And then this is a mean for population, right? This is a sampling uh, mean, a sample mean, right? Sample of the sample mean. Sorry, uh, the word is correct. Word is a mean of the sample mean, right? So mu plus mu1 suppose we it should be x bar 1 plus x bar 2 ha, dia lebih kurang dia tak, dia tak sepatutnya tulis uh, macam ni right? so but it's okay uh, you boleh ubah balik this is going to be x bar 1 uh, this is x bar 2 until x bar n right and this is going to be uh, x bar right uh, this is the proving lah ha huh? It should be equal to mu, right? Um, this is a standard error, right? Standard error of the sample mean. So standard error of the sample mean is um, variance divided by uh, number of sample size, right? We are taking the square root lah, uh, because it is a standard error. So sigma divided by square root of n, right? So this is a variance sigma divided by n. This is a variance of uh, sample mean, right? So if you are taking square root of n, because then you're going to be uh, a standard error of the sample mean. Okay. So this is a sampling distribution uh, of mean for a normal distribution, right? So x bar is having a normal distribution. So kita kata kita say mu x sigma square divided by n lah. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a variance for standard uh, variance for sample uh, uh, sample mean sampling distribution. Sorry, variance for sampling distribution. So we because we are taking a lot of sample, right? So we want to know the exact variance for each sample so now uh, are you okay this one this is just uh, just introduction for estimation right so as for uh, so far we already uh, know the point estimate and point estimator and the concept of sampling distribution how to calculate mean of the sample and the population and then we want to generalize to the, the whole population Right, so uh, let's look at another topic, uh, still under introduction of estimation, right? Tadi kita tengok est point estimator and point estimate. So now we're looking into uh, central limit theorem. Central limit theorem state that uh, the sampling distribution uh, of any statistic will be normal or approximately normal if the sample size is large enough. So, you need to highlight this one, right? So, dia kata kat sini, bila sampling distribution of any statistics will 
become normal distribution or approximately normal distribution, right? The exact normal distribution will be approximate to your normal distribution. As a rule of thumb, sample size of n more than 30 is large enough. Lah. Ini kebanyakan buku. Uh, but uh, this one, ramai uh, orang uh, misinterpret n more than 30. Right? So, they, uh, they anggap kalau n is more than 30, just so you can assume it's a normal distribution. But actually, when n is more than 30, it's not really normal distribution. Kita boleh proof menggunakan, let's say, um, I'm using, I guna apa, proof. let's say, Let's say kita ada um, So this is uh, N equal to 30 Right So let's say Kalau I increase The number Right Increase the number N equal to 50 So you nampak Notice dia punya Shape of the histogram eh? Dia tak nampak Exact to uh, Normal distribution lagi Normal distribution means that you have a bell curve, kan? So, kalau kita increase the sample size, is approximate to normal distribution. Nampak ada perbezaan tadi. Right? This is, uh, yang mana tadi? History. Oh, I tak boleh nak tukar. I'm using this command prompt. So, kalau I increase lagi, let's say I increase to 100. Right? So, dia lebih ke arah sana. Let's say I increase another uh, 1000. So, you nampak dia lebih kepada normal distribution. So, this is what uh, central limit theorem strive to say. That when you increase the sample size, right? so it's approximately to normal distribution. So, if you can prove uh, by limit, right? so uh, you can dapat uh, normal distribution lah. That means uh, standard normal distribution is a this, uh, normal distribution curve. Right. Um, so, the kata kat sini, tengok number point number 3. Right. Uh, if X bar is a mean of random sample of size N taken from the population mean mu and the variance sigma squared and the limiting form of distribution is Z distribution. Lah. This is a standard normal distribution. X bar minus mu divided by standard error. Lah. Sigma divided by square root of N. So this is uh, the standard uh, central limit theorem trying to say if the sample size is large enough right, so then the whole population, the whole distribution the whole data is approximately to normal distribution. So, when you have a normal distribution, the limiting theorem, the limiting equation will be Z equal to X bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of N. So, this is a Z distribution. The Z distribution is also known as a standard normal distribution where it have, let's say, x bar is having mean equal to 0 and variance equal to 1. So, provided n is approaching to infinity. Lah. Provided n is approaching to infinity. And we know that this uh, sigma over square root of n this is what we call as standard error right? standard error of the simple mean right so this is a statistic this is a parameter okay So, generally, 
in our class we will use we will stick on n more than 30 lah eh, sebagai indicator to say uh, the data is approximately to normal distribution right even though kita dah tengok tadi when data n is more than 30 uh, n is equal to 30 dia belum lagi normal distribution kita increase to 50 pun belum lagi uh, tapi dia nampak dia approaching eh, dia approaching so if we increase to 500, 100 baru nampak sikit bentuk dia I think the best uh, number to say that uh, the the data is having a normal distribution should be 500 and above, right? So if n is less than 30, the approximation is good if only only if the population is not too different from a normal distribution, right? Means that when n is less than 30, and right, when let's say we have a less sample or small sample. And we are taking the observation from a normal distribution, right? From normal distribution, so it can be treated as a normal distribution as well, lah. But we need to do some modification. That uh, means that we need to consider the degree of freedom. So let's say it's come the t distribution di kasi niya. Dia kena tuan t distribution. Kita kena tengok t distribution nanti. Now. Uh, the next, uh, the third part, uh, before we go to the the, uh, the, the real topic of uh, uh, estimation, right? Kita belum masuk lagi estimation in real, right? Uh, so, we just revise our knowledge on the previous topic, right? We just need to make our previous knowledge uh, as strong as possible before we go to the estimation part right? because estimation part require all this knowledge to be uh, pulled together assembled together uh, to know estimation theory now let's recall another term another to topic which is a normal distribution right so normal distribution is the most used statistical distribution like the principal use uh, reason are Normality arise naturally in many physical, biological, and social measure situation. So, so how do you know the symptom of uh, COVID nineteen? Right. So it based on normal distribution means that many people having the same symptom. So it's a normal things. Right. So if you are deviate from a normal population, so it's you are not normal. Right, so now, so normal distribution usually uh, in look like a bell shaped curve lah. So ini tak nampak bell shaped curve. So dia nampak selalu dalam bell shaped curve. Dia betul macam ni. Still tak cantik ah. So let's say I ambil this one. Right, kita copy. Can we copy this one? So, dia nampak lah, dekat sini, dia bentuk macam bell shape lah. So, this is the characteristic of a normal distribution curve. And if you notice dekat sini, it, the, 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 the distribution curve yang hujung dekat sini, it will never touch the axis. Right, remember, it will never touch the axis. Right, this is what we call asymptotic, right? Because sini, they will never touch the axis. This is x axis, kan? This is x axis. It will never touch the axis. And they akan hujung sini sampai negative infinity. So, to infinity. It will never touch the, uh, the, uh, the axis. Right? Because uh, in event probability, uh, there are no probability equal to zero lah. Right? For an event. Right? So, this is uh, the peak here is called as mean, right? This is a mean or X bar. Right? If you are taking from sample X bar, it's from uh, population, is mu. 
right? So this is mean, right? Okay. <clears throat> so now the normal distribution is characterized by two parameter. So we can let me highlight the case Mean equal to a mean and standard deviation lah. So in having uh, mean, mu and standard deviation. So we can say that x is having a normal distribution or a single variable, single data x is having a normal distribution. Normal distribution consists of two parameter, mean and variance. Right? Not a standard deviation, it should be variance lah. So you took out the This is supposed to be variance. And a sigma squared. Right, so we can note it as sigma squared. So mean is measure of central allocation and variance is a measure of spread. Lah. The, the spread of the distribution. So this is a quite good distribution. So let's say they are the spread like this juga, right? So they will jadi like this. They will jadi two peak. Sorry. Like uh, this pun boleh jadi. Right. So this one, uh, we can say that it having a spread or uh, dispersed variance, right? This one, we think it will get that is uh, the variance is quite consistent. So now let's look at the characteristic of normal distribution. So normal distribution is a bell shape or symmetrical about it means, right? Symmetrical means that, so there we can divide it, uh, divide the, the the distribution into two part right, by dividing uh, based on population mean or mean, right? Simple mean. So the area on the right hand side should be same as the area on the left hand side, right? Because it's a symmetrical distribution. And remember, in probability STA416, we, know, we already learned about probability. And the rule of probability is 2. It means that, let's say, for event X, right? Probability of X should lies between 0 and 1. You cannot more than 1. You cannot less than 0. And the total probability... Right. The total probability, probability of x n should be equal to 1. Right? Means that this is the total for discrete, for uh, continuous is the integration from inf negative infinity to infinity. fx with dx should be equal to 1. Right? So this is a basic rule of probability. So this is a Normal distribution is uh, continuous uh, random variable. So the total, right, the total area, right, should be equal to 1. The total area should be equal to 1. So then we can say that the total area on the right hand side is 0 0.5. The total area on the left hand side is also 0 0.5. Right? Okay. So the area of the distribution of each side is 0 0.5 lah. Okay. This one kita cover dah. dah, and dah. The probability are that random variable will have a value between any two points is equal to area under the curve. Right. So means that in normal distribution, there are, there are no point probability. There are no point probability. Means that you cannot find the exact point, the exact value here, the exact probability here. Because it's, it's based on the area, right? If you are measuring area, so you should cover the range, right? So we can only provide the value, the probability value between the range. Right? So I introduce the kit. So but to get another estimation we are looking into what range right sama contoh macam ni lah let's say if you still remember mh uh, 350 kan 250 ke 350 right? yang crash tu kan 
So dia crash So uh, Pasukan penyelamat Dia tahu Okay Dia ada dekat Laut China Selatan So very big Laut China Selatan Right So we need to Estimate Dekat mana dia turun Dekat mana dia crash So we, we Kita cari dekat situ saja. So This is the point of Estimation lah Kita akan cari Dekat satu Range dekat sini saja. Instead of Selecting the whole Range Right So this is what uh, Estimation uh, Purpose of estimation lah So now we have uh, normal distribution. Let's say I am putting this way. Fx is equal to 1 over sigma squared. And this is not sigma squared. Square root of 2 pi uh, exponential negative x minus mu squared divided by 2 sigma squared. So this is the PDF for uh, normal distribution for where x is between negative infinity to infinity right so this is a pdf for normal distribution right so as the sample size increase stated by central limit theorem right is the thing about this central limit theorem when the sample size is increased so it will produce mean equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one so, standard deviation equal to 1 and when equal to 0, we call it as a standard normal. Standard normal is a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and standard deviation equal to 1. So, this is the notation for standard normal distribution. In standard normal distribution, a normal distribution can be transformed to standard normal distribution by using Z formula, Z score. Uh, this is uh, based on central limit theorem, right? That score x minus mu divided by sigma. This is for single observation, right? So if you are looking into a sampling distribution, z should be equal to x bar minus mu divided by square sigma over uh, sigma over square root of n. This is for sampling distribution. Right, this is for single uh, data point, right? So score from original, right? This is a for single data point. Tapi kita takkan, uh, kita uh, we know that this is the same formula, right? But uh, the first formula, this is the first formula, is mean for a single observation in one sample. Lah. So now, uh, step to find the probability, if you still remember. Right. So, graph the normal distribution and share the area related to the property you want to find. Right, Convert the boundaries shaded from x value to z value by using this formula. Right. So, we're going to use a z uh, table. Right. Uh, z table by statistical, uh, statistical table. Uh, statistical by J. Uh, Mudok and Burns. Uh, so, kita tengok table number 3 and table number 4. And then, we're going to find the z-score and find the probability lah. So, uh, now let's look at example number 1. So, I think we're going to cover until chip example number 8. So, then kita akan berhenti. Next class, we want to uh, go in deep on chip estimation lah. Okay, so let's say uh, kita tengok the first example. Probability of Z more than 1.35. So this is a normal distribution curve. And we know that the normal distribution curve for standard normal mean is equal to 0. Right? From negative infinity to infinity lah. So 1.35 should be on the right hand side lah. So, this one should be 1.35. So, we want to know the probability of this area on the right hand side. Right? We want to know the probability of this area. So, normally, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a statistical table, you can integrate lah. You can integrate from 1.35 to 
infinity so 1 over square root of 2 pi exponential negative x square over 2 uh, with respect to x if we don't have a, statistic, a statistical table right but since we have a statistical table where is my statistical table so we're going to look at the statistical table before we go and use this number this is table number three page number 13 right you can download the statistical table from my website uh, from my google uh, classroom uh. it's uh, also available in my website uh. right uh, we're looking into chapter table number three right so kita tengok kat sini area entail of the normal distribution right so the function baca dulu uh, every time you want to use the uh, the table you need to read the instruction first the function tabulated is 1 minus mu uh, phi u right where phi u is a cumulative distribution function of a standard dice normal variable right so dekat sini u dekat sini is representing z lah Ha, nampak tak dia representing Z lah. So, kat sini dia dah beritahu. U is equal to X minus mu divided by sigma. Right. Which is, uh, in our uh, part is, U is our uh, is Z lah. Is equal to Z. So, kita tengok dekat sini. Uh, is the probability standard, that it, uh, kalau kita tengok kat sini pun tak apa. Kita boleh tengok dekat sini. Right. The integration part is until infinity from u until infinity u until infinity means that it only covers the, the, the integration on the right hand side on the right hand side okay so means that from more than zero to infinity u is more than zero and dia tak ada dekat negative side okay boleh faham ah so, if you are looking in uh, Z equal more than 1.35, so 1.35, look at sini, eh? so, cik ke sikit, okay, 1.35, look at sini, right, 1.35, so supposedly, dia dekat, sini lah, 1.35, zero point zero eight eight five boleh faham ah so it should be zero point zero eight eight five okay so now let's look at another one so the get the sini find the probability z less than negative one point three five so we want to find the area on the left hand side but if you're looking into the statistical table, it only provide the area on the right hand side. Right? And we know from the characteristic of normal distribution, the area on the right hand side is also equal to the area on the right hand side. I'm sorry, area on the right hand side is equal to area on the left hand side. Right? So it means that it's just the same value, right? This is also equal to 0 0.0885. Boleh? So, this one should be probability of Z less than 2.47. Now, kita uh, buat dalam bentuk curve. Always draw a distribution curve. Huh? Baru kita nampak. Right, so, this is the 2.47. We want to find the area on the left hand side. This is also equal to, sebab dia tak melangkau kosong kan? As long as dia tak melangkau kosong, this is also equal to probability of Z more than 2.47. Right? As long as they're not cross over 0. Right? So, this is, oh sorry, sorry. this is uh, 2 point, not negative, right? Sorry, this is not, not the correct way. Right, kita tengok balik semula. This is, uh, tengok betul-betul je ni lah. This is no negative point lah. Eh? Uh, 
So it should be uh, the, the melancho kosong, right? So this is zero, 2.47, you can see, 2.47. This is, remember, eh, negative infinity to infinity. So now, kalau dia tak langkau kosong, right, kita boleh samakan saja macam tadi, right? So now, kita nampak dekat sini, dia melangkau kosong, right? Melangkau kosong. Boleh faham, eh? So it should be equal to, and we need to look at the characteristic of normal distribution, right? The total area is equal to 1, right? So, and the statistical table is given us the value on the right hand side, right? So, we want to find a value on the left hand side. So, it should be equal to 1 minus probability of, let's say, uh, kalau I buat macam ni, okay juga kan, let's say, eh? Uh, let's see. This is zero. Two point four seven. Right. I uh, area on the right hand side. So one minus the area on the right hand side. So I will get the area on the left hand side. Boleh faham apa yang nak cakap? I cari area on the right hand side ni. Then 1 minus. So I will get a area on the left hand side. Right? So should be. Um, yeah, so I'm going to tap. Huh? <coughs> 2.47 should be. Somewhere this is a 2.4. 7 is here yeah. 0.00676 should be oops 1 minus 0 0.006676 is it All right so you can calculate the value and of course, the value should be more than 0 0.5. Right? The logically, so but dekat sini, 0 0.5, dekat sini, 0 0.5 dah. Dia akan ambil sikit lagi dekat sini. So, it should be more than 0 0.5. Right? So, this is the value. Same goes to this example. So, we want to find the value on the right hand side. This is a another part. Right, so negative 1.85 so we want to find this value this area right so we want to find this area to find the area on the right hand side sama juga concept let's say Kita ambil, kita measure this area. We are measuring this area. So, this area is equal to the area yang sebelah sana kan? Kecil saja. This is 1.85. Right? So, to get this area, kita mirror kan dia. Right? So, when we want to mirror, dia akan dapat area dekat sini lah. Yang ni area yang kita nak cari sebenarnya yang ini. Right? So, 1 minus probability of Z more than 1.85. So 1.85, it should be 1.85 is 0.0322. 1 minus 0.0322. So you will get the probability of Z more than 1 point, negative 1.85. Okay. The next one, okay, the next one, probability of Z is between negative 1.56 and 2.34, it should be the area between, this is 0, 
negative 1.56 and this is 2.34 so this is the area that we want to find so this is the area we want to find so how to do this Jana buat. Kalau kita ambil, let's say, let's say um. Let's say I buat macam ni. Let's say uh, I ambil this area. Oops. Right. This is 0. This is negative 1.56. This whole area dekat sini. Right. I mean the whole area dekat sini. This is the idea. Kita, that's why kita all, we always draw the normal distribution curve. Uh, we, because we, if we have a complicated uh, a problem, we can draw it back. So if we take the whole area of the casini, we minus with the area on the right hand side. So this is 0, this is 2.34. So, oops. Sama again. So to get this area, we take this whole area, you will minus with this area. So we will get this area. Right? So now we can see clearly sama saja concept them. So this one should be 1 minus probability of Z more than 1.56 minus probability of Z more than 1 uh, more than 2.3 for very simple right so we just find it the find the value in statistical table 1.56 should be uh, somewhere here is 0 0.59 uh, 0 0.059 0594 minus probability of 2.34 2.34 is somewhere here. 0 0.009964 lah. 0 0.00964. Is it? 2.34. Yeah. So you will get the probability value. It should be 0 0.9 something, right? Okay, well, eh? so there is another way eh? if you don't want to use a uh, statistical table, you can always use your own calculator to calculate the probability. Right? So, to get that, let's see, to go to that part, let's see, uh, in calculator. We have, let's say, probability distribution curve. Macam ni, contoh lah. This is the first one, second part, and third part. Right. So, uh, let me color this one. Uh, this is uh, blue color.
So I think you need to have a pencil color juga lah Untuk color you can do solution So make it interesting So next I say I guna color ni So to illustrate like, Let's say So we have three part dekat sini. So this uh, this part we call as Q. This is P, Q and R. Right. So and of course this is a standard normal right? from zero negative infinity to infinity. So if you are Looking into the area on the left hand side, so we are going to use P. If you are looking the area on the right hand side, we are looking for R function. If you are looking the area in the middle, we are using Q function. Right. So, let's say kita tengok uh, calculator. This is a calculator. Right. So, um, first step is, let's say, you are going to put calculator U, D and MAT, right? So, first step, you need to click on mode and find stat number 3, right, stat, eh? right? And so then, benda yang sama kita dapat on the previous chapter, right? When we want to calculate mean and variance, right? remember? So, we don't need to do, we don't need to select anything. We don't need to select anything, just click AC and we just need to make sure the symbol from MAT is changed to statistic stat. Right, so we click on shift 1, right, so find distribution, right, find distribution, number 5, some calculator it have until 7, right, so find uh, find distribution, DIS, TR. Click number 5. So, it is having 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we are going to fully utilize 1, 2, 3. P, Q and R. So, let's say uh, you want to find the area. Let's say probability of Z more than 1.35. So, 1.35 is on the R side, right? So, Kita akan pakai R, which is number 3, 1.35. Tutup kurungan, sama dengan. So, you will get the value lah. You will get the value. So, if you want to find the area on the left hand side, right, left hand side. So, we are going to use P function. So, uh, 1, 5. 1, negative 1.35 So, supposed to get the same value juga lah Right, let's say we want to find this area Right, uh, let's say this one lah, this area uh, This area on the right hand side kan Right hand side should be uh, 5, R lah R is on right hand side Negative 1.85 so, you already got the value lah. 1, 0 0.9. Uh, this is going to be 0 0.9678, right? Uh, so, 84. Uh, 784 lah, betul. Okay. So, but by using calculator just to confirm your result only. Eh? If you are in a final exam or test, you need to show the... Uh, calculation macam ni lah You can draw the statistical distribution Show uh, the step by step lah uh, To 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 confirm that you have a knowledge Right Boleh eh? If you don't you, If you are straight away use a calculator or statistical table Right So maybe you We, we charge you copying from others Or you don't know you just Tembak saja kan? We don't have the knowledge. Now, let's look at the E, right? E. So, we want to find the area between. So, area between we're going to use Q, right? Remember? 
tengok dekat atas ni dia punya distribution ya PQR so if you want to find the area between we going to use Q so to use Q just very simple right uh, Q number two on the right right left hand side negative 1.56 plus Q 2.34 it should be like, it should give uh, 0 0.9308 dapat tak benda yang sama 930 uh, 9 it should be 9398 lah tapi kalau you calculate ni mungkin mungkin you akan dapat uh, different value sikit-sikit tapi tak beza banyak pun lebih kurang but this is the exact value in calculator is the exact value right so now let's look at example number 2 uh, before we go to example number 2 I think we should have a 5 minute break right a toilet break okay so let's look at example number 2 right so calculate the following using a standard normal distribution curve uh, distribution find the value of k right uh, find the value of k so now let's look at the first example mm. so the kita kat sini dia kata uh, probability of z more than k is equal to 0 0.1 so before we go further in this example let's look at the characteristic of uh, normal distribution so the area on the right hand side is 0 0.5 the area on the left hand side is also 0 0.5 right just need to remember that one right I want you to remember that one and understand that the characteristic of the normal distribution, the area on the right hand side is 0 0.5 and the area on the left hand side is 0 0.5. If you are looking into probability of Z more than K equal to 0 0.1, which means that it's not more than 0 0.5. It's supposed to be on the right hand side. Lah. The right hand side. And this is 0. This is K and the total area dekat sini is 0 0.1 it's more, not more than 0 0.5 ok so let's say dekat sini probability of Z less than K is 0 0.95 means that more than 0 0.5 so K is somewhere here the area is consists of the whole uh, right to uh, left to right this is a 0.95 right by logic lah so kita tengok yang bawah lagi satu this is probability of z more than z more than k is 0 0.75 so z more than 0 0.75 this is uh, if more than 0 0.75 if you are look, putting k is uh, on the right hand side dia tak sampai 0 0.75 lah still less than 0 0.75 so we can cover the whole area here is 0 0.5 so we need to take another 25% in this area so this is going to be your k which is a negative k right boleh faham eh? this whole area is 0 0.75 ok another one is probability of z less than k is equal to 0 0.25 right so less than k is still 0 0.25 so the whole area on the left hand side is 0 0.5 less than 0 0.5 is 0 0.25 so be negative k dekat sini lah this is the area that we want to find okay so you need to know uh, either k is a positive value or negative value by looking at the total uh, probability value lah. so since this is very simple so how do you determine k is equal to 1.28 right for the first example so the number the seen this is a 0 0.1 this is the value of k so 
uh, by looking at the physical table, but we are not looking to table number three, but we're going to look at table number four. But actually, we're going to use these two table, uh, table number three and table number four together. So, the case in table number four, it says that um, the value of alpha, the case in this is the value of alpha. It already give you the value of alpha. Right. Right. They already give you the value of alpha. If you want to find 0 0.05, so this is the uh, the mu alpha is 0 1.4 1.6449. If the alpha is 0 0.1, let's say and tadi kita dapatkan 0 0.1. So the value of uh, ni this one is 1.1.2818 one six lah. So, kita tengok dekat sini. When the value of k and the value of probability z more than k is 0 0.1. So, the value of uh, k should be 1.2816. Boleh nampak? 1.2816. So, that's why That's why uh, K is 1.2816 on the right hand side. So, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, this is the value of Z less than K equal to 0 0.95. So, 0 0.95 on the left hand side, right? But if you look into the statistical table, it only limit on the half part, right? Half part means 0 0.5 only. So, dia akan bagi the value 0. Point, until 0. 0.5. I tak boleh tulis dalam ni. Eh. Alright. Until 0. 0.5. Maksudnya, dia akan bagi setengah value saja. Right. So, to get this value, we try to convert. This is 0. 0.05, right? Right. So, this is a state value kan. 0, uh, K kan. So, benda yang sama juga. Dia sama saja. Sebab characteristic of normal distribution ni sama saja. Right, uh, let me use another color. Right, um, yeah. So, so benda yang sama, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.05, this is the K. Benda yang sama. Right, sama saja. The, 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 the point that we want to find is the value of K, right? So, we can use statistical table. 0 0.05 is here. So, K is equal to 1.5 uh, 6, 4, 4, 9. So, K is equal to 1.6449. Right. So, same goes to the next example, C. So, since we only have 0 0.5, the maximum value. So, let's say... So, this one should be, kita measure dekat sini. This is a negative K. Right? So, 0. This is the value 0 0.25. Right? We measure on the right, left hand side. Tapi, uh, sadly, in uh, statistical table, they only give you the value on the right hand side. They are not giving you value on the left hand side. So, this is also equivalence to the value on the right hand side, kan? So, 0 0.25. This is K. Right? So, now, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is 0 0.6745. Right? 6745. So, K is equal to, K here, I'm talking about this K. This graph, K is equal to 0 0.6, berapa tadi? 7, 4, 5. Right? So, translating this value to the, to the, this graph. 
right translating this value to this graph k should be equal to negative 0 0.6745 right you need to translate lah sebab kita dah translate banyak kali kan tiga kali kita translate so we need to translate to the, the original part ok same goes to this one right this one is also equal to this is 0 0.25 benda yang sama lah uh, negative 1 0. negative 0. 0.6745 Okay. Boleh eh? So now let's move to the example number 3 This is the application But not really application We just want to simply One step by step go to The, the real application Right So now Define z uh, define x as a random variable, right? Uh, follows a normal distribution with mean equal to sixty five, and variance equal to thirty six, right? So we want to find the probability of x more than seventy. So this is one of the example. So first step is we need to draw the distribution curve, right? X is is more than uh, seventy. So, the mean is 65. Remember, this is a normal distribution. Eh? Kita nak calculate from x distribution. This is from negative infinity to infinity. So, we are looking on the right hand side. right? x more than 70. So, this is 70. Right? This is a probability of x more than 70. Tengok notation lah. Tadi kita guna Z. Now we are using X. So this is the first step. The second step is we need to convert this value to Z distribution. So probability of uh, Z is equal to so remember Z is equal to X minus mu divided by sigma squared. So divided by sigma. Right, so this one should be uh, 70 minus mu is 65 divided by sigma. The variance is sigma squared, right? The variance is sigma squared, so sigma should be equal to square root of 36 equal to 6. So divided by 6. So this one should be probability of z more than 0 0.8333, right? So step number three. We redraw the standard normal distribution. Tadi kita draw a normal distribution curve. Now we are drawing standard normal distribution. So standard normal distribution mean is equal to zero. This is from negative infinity to infinity. This is Z distribution already. So zero more than 0 0.883 supposed to be on the right hand side. Lah. So this is 0 0.833 lah. Right? But in a statistical table, they only give you 0 0.83, right? So, kita tengok 0 0.83, table number 3. 0 0.83 here is 0 0.2033. So, this is equal to 0 0.2033, right? So, we can say that probability of x more than 70 is equal to 0.2033 so if you are looking using a calculator it's more uh, accurate so this is on the right hand side we're going to use pqr r right number three uh, 0 0.83 oops 0.8333 So, it should be 0 0.0, 0 0.20233, right? Kalau kita menggunakan banyak, ni lah, this is too, too much, eh? 
Ah, yeah. This is the exact value, lah. Okay. So remember the the step. First, we draw the uh, normal distribution curve. Second is we convert x variable to z distribution, and we draw the z distribution curve and we find the probability value of z distribution curve. This is a step. You follow the step. Okay. So now let's look at example and B. Pula. Kita tengok B. Very simple. Uh, okay. Probability of uh, X less than 7 and 68. So we have mean is equal to 65. Right? 65. This is the mean 65. So this is uh, our value 68. So we want to find this area, right? So we want to find this area. So first we convert to Z distribution less than 68 minus 65 divided by 6. 68, so 3 divided by 6, uh, 1 over 2. 0.5 so the area for z distribution is z should be less than 0 0.5 lah so this is the area benar sama juga but we want to make sure we understand we draw in understand uh, proper manner Probability of Z less than 0 0.5. So, looking at the statistical table. This is the main uh, source of our uh, reference. Eh? So, calculator is just to confirm back our calculation. So, 0 0.5 is somewhere here. Lah. 0 0.3085. So, this one should be. 0.3085 so we can see probability of x less than 68 is 0.3085 okay next let's look at example sudah sudah ke belum right so let's look at uh, C, same procedure, right? So, oops, to spread, right? So the mean is equal to 65. So this is 60, this is 70. So we are trying to find this area. So this is the first step, right? 65, right? Eh? Second step is uh, find the probability uh, Z distribution. 60 minus 65 divided by 6. This is Z already. 70 minus 65 divided by 6. So uh, negative 5 over 6. Where is my calculator? Negative 5, negative 5 over 6. 0 0.883 so 0 0.8333 z this is so same lah. 0 0.8333 so remember in the previous step eh, example to find this area let's say we we draw the whole thing right Let's say we want to find negative uh, 0 0.833 and 0 0.8333. So this is the area that we want to find. It's also equal to J 
Chavana. Using the color. So, so in summer again. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, on the left hand side, because in here, we take everything negative 0 0.8333 minus on the right hand side, yes, in here 0 0.8333. But then, some alright, same, right? So, this one should be 1 minus probability of z more than 0 0.8. 3 lah. Kita make it short lah. 8, 3 lah. Eh? So, eh, since we have 4 decimal point, in uh, our example, we just take 2, we, we round into 2 decimal point lah. 0 0.83 minus probability of Z more than 0 0.83. Ataupun sama 1 minus 2 probability of Z more than 0 0.83. So, 0 0.83 is 0. Point, where is it? 0 0.2033. So, multiply with 2. Right? So, you will get 1 minus 2 multiply with 0 0.2033. Oops. 2033. Should be zero point five nine three four. Right. You can also use calculator. Right. Uh, let's say five. So we are looking into. Uh, middle value so q negative 0 0.83 plus q 0 0.83 so you should get the same value lah. okay so next uh, example number four yes Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be 1 minus lah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, but they are uh, more than 0 0.5. Eh? So, it should be uh, 1 minus 0 0.3. Lah. 1 minus 0 0.3. Because this is the area probability of Z more than 0 0.5. Right? So, it should be minus. So, in this one, uh, minus lah. 1 minus 0 0.3085. Here, we will get the answer lah. And of course, kalau kita guna calculator pun sama juga lah. On the right hand side is P, P uh, 0 0.5. Juga 0 0.2, uh, 0.6914 lah. 0 0.6914, 15, 14615. Right. Okay, so example number four uh, is a combination of uh, example number two and three, right? It's a combination of example number two and three. So let's look at. Uh, Look at example number 4 ni, uh, A, macam mana dia buat? So, if X is having a normal distribution with mean equal to 100 and stand, uh, variance equal to 16. So, we want to find probability of X more than K is equal to 0 0.1121. So, 0 0.1121 is not more than 0 0.5, right? It's not more than 0 0.5, so we could expect, so this is the uh, the x value, eh? so this is 100, we could expect 
the value of k is somewhere here so, and then we want to find the value more than eh? more than sepatutnya on the right hand side eh? this is the 0 0.1121 okay so next probability of z more than k minus uh, 100 divided by uh, 4 right, because uh, sigma square root of sigma square is 4 lah. and then this one should be 0 0.1121 so, looking at the statistical table, at right, statistical table, nampak kat sini, okay. Yeah. So, as I said, we're going to use table number 3 and table number 4. So, first thing, look at table number 4. So, try to find alpha equal to 0 0.1121. Impossible, right? Because uh, this one, in table number 4, we only have uh, in some range, lah, in some uh, value saja. 0 0.11, tak jumpa. Right? Tak jumpa. So, we need to look back into table number 3. So, table number 3. Table number 3 says that uh, kat sini value yang dalam ni is the probability value right is the value in the shaded area betul is the value of the shaded area sama macam table number 4 ni table number 4 the shaded area this is the value of the shaded area right so what we need to do now here to find the close value to our 0 0.1121 0 0.1121 cuba cari uh, dia dekat sini 0 0.11290 1170 1150 51 1131 1112 1131 and 1112 so kita tengok which one is more closer to 0. 1121 1, so minus lah 1131 1, 1, minus 0 uh, 1121 1, so it's a 10 right the 10 ni beza dia 10 dekat sini ni 10 oops right kalau yang sebelah tu oops 1121 1112 1, 9 lah Right, ini 10, ini 9. Right, so ini 10. Right, so 9 tu berapa? Ah, uh, satu point dua, one point two two. So it should be the whole value here is equal to 1.22 is it 1.22 like the whole area ni maksudnya dekat sini we can translate it to probability of z more than 1.22 is equal to 0 0.1121 ok We can translate to that point lah. So we know that this is the the same thing, right? Benda yang sama. So we want to find the value of k. So we extract the value k minus hundred divided by four equal to one point two two, right? Di kat sini di kita two point one point two one one four lah. Tapi we can use my method find the closest uh, uh, value yang kita ambil itu sajalah and in final example sama step lah answer will be the same step as I taught you today so this one should be k sama dengan berapa 1.22 multiply with 4 plus 100 should be 104.88 104.88 okay 
and we know that the k is on the positive side right k is on positive side okay now let's look at b b we have mu equal to 250 and sigma squared is 25 we want to find k is less than uh, x less than k is equal to 0 0.05 so first step let's try to draw the situation so this is 250 right k less than uh, x less than k should be on the right hand uh, left hand side 0 0.05 how do i know on the left hand side because the value of probability is not more than 0 0.5 so uh, the trick here is if you look at less than it's supposed to be on the left hand side right we are measuring on the left hand side if the symbol is more than we are measuring on the right hand side if the value of probability is less than 0 0.5 it's supposed to be purely on the left hand side uh, if the value of uh, probability is more than 0 0.5 so they can ambil sedikit on uh, the area on the right hand side to the right left hand side okay so now we want to find the value of k so this is k right so from, from negative infinity to infinity so probability of x less than k so to tukar ya yeah, z less than k minus 250 divided by 25 square root of 25 is equal to 5 is equal to 0 0.05 so let's say we translate it into uh, z distribution right probability of uh, z distribution is betul ya benda yang sama lah supposed to be uh, the same value lah right this is the k right so this one should be uh, I am not supposed to use the same value eh? kita, kita guna different notation this is z eh? remember this is x boleh nampak, eh? nampak eh? ada dua dua form uh, eh? this is the first uh, graph yang kita draw tadi this is the second graph yang kita draw this is z distribution right from negative infinity to infinity so this one we already use k value right k will represent the value of k here right uh, if you convert to z let use another symbol to make uh, to, to not making our life complicated or uh, confused uh, let use um, different symbol let's say um, what symbol you want to use let's say j uh, let's say j Believe, huh? so now we want to find the value of j right the value of j is, is also equal to this is a uh, 0 0.05 right so this sama juga the area on the right hand side eh? this is also j this is a negative j this is j this is 0 negative infinity to infinity so 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 supposed to be tengok table number 4 0 0.05 is 0 or 1 point 1.6449 so this is 1.6449 so j dekat sini since you are looking into the left hand side so this is going to be negative 1.6449 <coughs> so now we can translate this dekat sini ya we can translate this probability of z less than j minus 250 divided by 5 
equal to 0 0.05. Right. So the whole the whole thing here I think I think is uh confused by it, eh? uh -huh. I think we remain this as a JK lah huh? K juga. Tapi dia akan confuse dekat sini. Uh -huh. Ya, yeah, this is this is K. Right. Dia tak berubah dekat sini lah. But this one uh, dia akan berubah sebagai J. Right. This is K. Right. You nampak kan? Eh? Tukar balik eh. Uh, this still remain as K. At the first formula ni. Right. I, dekat sini, I, I, I took off uh, notation sebagai J. Negative J and J. So, the whole thing here is J. Boleh faham? Eh? Hope you're not confused. So, since they are on the left hand side, so this are negative J. So, negative J. So, K minus 250 divided by 5 equal to negative 1.6449 so now you can find value of k right so negative 1.6449 multiply with 5 plus 250 should be 241.7755 so this one k is equal to 241 Okay So you can find the value uh, C then D, you try sendiri D also you can do by yourself Let's look at example number 5 Uh, sebab nombor 5 boleh tengok sendiri nantilah ok now let's look at example number tak apa-apa, saya terangkan dengan you saya terangkan dengan you example number 5 an electrical firm manufacturer light bulbs uh, that have length of life that approximately normal distributed with mean equal to 800 hours and standard deviation 40 hours find the probability that a random sample of 16 bulbs will have an average life less than what 775 now we are talking a different perspective in the same concept All right so previously example one and the four we are looking into a single value All right now we are looking into a sampling distribution so let's say like i said together we have x is having normal distribution approximately normal distribution with mean equal to 800 and variance equal to 40 squared right so we are taking n equal to 16 right and then we want to know what is the probability average life what is the probability of average life probability of x bar Right, less than 775. So remember the uh, previously I said to you, if you have only single value x minus mu divided by sigma, this is uh, the con conversion of z distribution. If you have a sing z, uh, sorry, you have a sample mean, uh, mean a sample uh, distribution x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of And this is an error. Right. <clears throat> so, now. Since we are looking into the... The, what, what we call as a sampling distribution. This is the original, the first one. Right. So now, since we have a mean x bar for 16 uh, observation, so n mean is uh, still remain as 800. 
So the standard error or standard deviation will be the standard error squared. Right? So means that uh, 40, uh, this is the standard deviation, divided by square root of 16, and then you square this one. Right? So this is the distribution. So now, this one should be equal to 10 again, 10 squared. And based on this example, right? so we want to find probability of x bar less than 775. Same procedure, right? Probability of you co you convert lah, z equal to less than 775, which is our mean minus 800, which is our population mean divided by. Uh, this is already converted to. Kita dah convert this one kan? This one is our standard error. Benda yang sama lah. So, kita masuk kat sini. This is 10. Nampak tak? Boleh faham lah? So, we will get the, uh, we compute lah as usual. Benda yang sama, we will get 0 0.0621. Right. So, now look at example number 6. Time spent waiting in line or driver to get. So, I think this is going to be our last example for today. Uh, example number 7 and example number 8, you do it by yourself. Right. So, example number 6. A time, the time spent waiting in line by all drivers to get their license renewed at Jabatan uh, Pengangkutan Jalan, Ipoh, have normal distribution with mean equal to 24 minutes and standard deviation is 7 minutes. Let x bar be a mean waiting time of a random sample. So, random sample of 110, 101 driver renewing license at the ho at this office. So, describe the sampling distribution of x bar. So, just describe the sampling distribution of x bar. Lah. x bar is having a normal distribution with mean equal to 24, right? And variance equal to, variance equal to sigma squared. A sigma over square root of n, then then you squared lah, standard error squared lah. Sebab kita nak measure variant, uh, uh, distribution of, sampling distribution lah. So, this one should be um, 7 over square root of 101 squared. Right. So, this is a sampling distribution. So, find the probability that mean waiting time uh, of the sample get to get the license renew is less than 22 minutes. So, probability of x less than 22 x bar. So, but, but, macam mana I x bar? Mean waiting time. Probability of mean waiting time. So, mean of less than 22 minutes lah. So, benda yang sama. Um, we just convert this to z distribution z less than 22 minus uh, mean is equal to saya letak macam ni lah bagi you nampak kan right so this is a new z uh, formula so probability of z less than 22 minus uh, 24 divided by 7 over square root of 101 so, tekan calculator. So, let's say. Twenty two minus twenty four. Divide by. Seven over square root of one zero one. So, it should be. Probability of negative two point eight seven. Probability of. Z. Negative two point eight seven. Right, 2.871. So, so to find probability of z less than 0 0.2.871, right, let's see, kita buat a z distribution lah. Negative 2.87. So, it should be on the right, right, uh, left hand side lah. So, cuma cari dalam calculate, dalam table, so this is the table. 2.87, 2.87 is somewhere... Here, two zero point zero two zero five. It should be zero point zero zero two zero five. 
Ouais, les sort. Ok. Very simple. Alright. So basically, this is a simple example. Lah. Alright, uh, example number 7 is quite complicated. Example number 8 is also quite complicated. And this is a straightforward punya example. Lah. Alright, uh, uh, this one, example number 7B. Alright, this is uh, a applying example number 3. Uh, we apply the knowledge on example number 3 into example number 7B. Benda yang sama lah, senang saja. Okay, ada soalan before we end our session? So, if no question, then I think that's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.